Will Terrell, and welcome to this video. <laughs> uh, this is going to be People Sketching, episode 13. Can't believe I've done this many People Sketching videos. <laughs> uh, and right now I'm coloring, uh, not at the second. <laughs> I don't know why I feel the need to clarify that, but uh, this is actually a guy that I saw at the grocery store a couple weeks ago, and uh, I was for some reason I was fascinated by that he had brown leather gloves on and he kept doing you know putting his hand like this and just very elegant poses and for some reason the brown gloves just accentuated everything uh, so yeah so now I'm just coloring the sketch of this guy uh, I'm trying to saturate the page uh, one thing I found with the Prismacolor markers that really helps is if you just let the the markers soak into the page. Copics too, like if you just cover it, it makes a big difference. Uh, and then pull out lights and darks from there. There's something I wanted to talk about in this video, uh, and it's been popping up a lot um, online, like on Facebook, and uh, when I talk to artists at conventions. Uh, and it's, it's um, why artists don't get good feedback. Um, and I've noticed this all throughout my career that uh, artists go through phases where it doesn't matter what they do, they don't get good feedback from people. And um, a lot of artists take it personally, <laughs> understandably. Um, and what, I, what do I mean by that? Um, it's like if you, you do a lot of sketches and uh, you show them to friends or family or, or you post them on like deviant art or, or something like that and it doesn't matter what you post up uh, people just don't respond to it like they don't like it they don't comment on it uh, and so on and so forth or, or, or you even do a, an, an entire portfolio like if you're trying to be a concept designer or a storyboard artist or character designer or do comic books uh, and you build a portfolio and you take it to a convention and show it to people and uh, <laughs> and it's like it's like they don't even notice it like they just kind of no comment and you know go on your way you know or, they, or they'll say something and then just to get you to move on uh, and artists find it extremely frustrating and uh, so I want to kind of explain why it is that you're not getting good feedback on your work and what you can do to improve on it uh, and also let you know that you're not alone you know this is a normal phase of, of being an artist it's something that you have to go through when I talk about this uh, about artists not being able to get good feedback uh, it's not just beginning artists um, I find this happens a lot with artists at all levels of skill um, and there, there are different reasons for it, um, some easier to confront than others. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go through this, through these phases and see if I can explain them as best as I can. Uh, and this comes from the perspective of somebody that I've looked at a lot of portfolios and I've looked at a lot of sketchbooks uh, and I've looked at um, stuff from people that are working professionals people that are just starting out, um, people that are almost there. Like you can look at their portfolio and you can see if they just did this one thing, they would be there. They would be at a professional level and getting hired. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've had a lot of experience looking at artists' work and knowing what it is they need to do to get it over that hump. Um, but and uh, I'm probably going to do a follow-up video also talking about... Um, how to get good feedback <laughs> not just why you're not getting good feedback but like uh how to you know make a good impression online make a good impression at conventions um and the reason i'm not doing that now is because there's plenty of videos out there for that sort of thing a lot of resources for it too uh and you know it, i can add a little bit to it but i think uh for this video uh, it, it'll, you'll find it more helpful to find the explanation for why you're not getting good feedback. So the first stage of being an artist um, is really, really ugly. <laughs> it's really messy. Uh, and it's it's at that phase where your artwork is so bad that uh, pretty much anybody you can show it to has something to say. 
it's really a painful time to go, you know, to grow out of. Because <laughs> it's like, um, for me especially, I was bad. I was really bad. Uh, and for a good 10 years, any art class I took, I was the worst artist in the room. Which is not a bad place to be because it means that you can learn from every person that you meet, every artist that you meet. Uh, there's something you can pick up from them, you know, where if you're the best artist in school or in your school or the best artist in your class, or if you think you are, uh, which is sometimes even worse, uh, then who are you going to learn from? You know, um, you're going to be frustrated that the teacher doesn't really know what kind of answers to give you and so on and so forth. So if you're at the bottom of the barrel and uh, your stuff is, you know, really raw, shall we say, <laughs> The, the good thing is that you can learn from everybody that you meet. Uh, and if you have that attitude that you are going to learn something from every person that you meet, uh, then that will help you go a long way. And people are more likely to want to teach you and give more uh, advice and feedback. Um, the, the downside is uh, sometimes there's just too much. Take, take a look at – this is some of my artwork from my <laughs> – Right after I got out of high school, uh, I, I just found this folder a couple weeks ago, uh, and it's artwork from uh, 1996, and I was ble I believe I was like 18 or 19, uh, and I would show this stuff to people, and they their jaw would drop at how bad it was. <laughs> uh, and more than once, I got people telling me I should become an accountant, uh, or you know. Anything but an artist, you know, I should look into what <laughs> and, and to be fair, I wanted to be a writer first. I didn't want to be an artist. So I wasn't expecting, you know, like uh, glorious reviews of my artwork. But uh, I had some of my favorite artists uh, like Jim Lee. You know, he he was like, you you are in for a lot of uh, heartache if you if you go down this road of being an artist because you've got a lot to learn. Um and the problem is when you when you're that raw as an artist, it's hard to tell people where to start when you're in this stage because uh, there's just so much to learn. You've got to learn anatomy. You've got to learn perspective. You've got to learn um, facial features, expressions. You've got to learn costume design and uh, how to draw buildings and how to draw <laughs> trees and uh, you know you don't know how to draw anything and um, you, uh, really what it comes down to is you haven't done the work yet. Um, and so the feedback, when somebody shows me a portfolio uh, like my portfolio here, the only thing I can tell them is to draw a lot. Uh, fill up 10 sketchbooks in a year. You know, um, do Take as many drawing classes as you can. Figure drawing classes. Uh, draw your friends. You, know, you, you really... What is missing now in your portfolio is mileage. Those answers that you're looking for um, can only be found in your sketchbook. <laughs> Most of the questions I get from people, they're you know I could tell they're hoping that I have that magic answer for them, but I can't. Uh, what you're looking for can only be found in your sketchbook. And I've also noticed that artists in this phase tend to hoard and collect reference material. Like they're, they buy every single how to draw book they can find and they read tutorials and essays on the internet and, uh, and they spend more time looking for references and resources than they do actually using it because um, they're looking for that magic bullet. But really the answers that they're looking for are in their sketchbook and that's the only place that they can find them is by doing lots and lots of drawings and putting in that, the miles. Um, and I, I wish that I could give magic answers, <laughs> but it just doesn't work like that. There's nothing anyone can say to make you a better artist. <laughs> People can tell you everything you need to know to be an artist, and it won't make you any better. The only thing that makes you better is by drawing <laughs> and putting in the time and learning those lessons. Uh, I, I, I tell this to students all the time, like uh, a teacher's job is only to demonstrate that something is possible. It's an, a student's job to make it possible for themselves. Uh, and in this phase, that's very, very much true. Like nobody can do it for you. You, you have to put in the time. 
And unfortunately, uh, what most artists want when they show me their artwork at this stage is they want a magic bullet. They want me to tell them it, um, the one thing they can do to suddenly get better as an artist. When uh, you you really need to put in a thousand hours or ten thousand hours of drawing, like that is the magic bullet. <laughs> it's you have to draw a lot, a lot. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's frustrating because um, artists. It's frustrating because people come to me quite often, and in fact, I get a lot of emails from artists uh, saying, "We take a look at my portfolio, or take a look at my Deviant Art, or my Facebook page." Uh, and a lot of times, I'll take a look at it, but there's nothing I can say, uh, especially if you're just showing me one or two drawings. Um, I can pick apart those one or two drawings and uh it wouldn't do you any good it would make you feel bad about your art and my goal isn't to make you feel bad about your art my goal is to encourage you uh and so the best advice i can give to most of those artists is to say draw a lot grab a sketchbook and fill it up this month even if it's bad drawings like learn to fall in love with doing bad drawings learn to laugh at your mistakes and uh, if you do that, if you fill up you know five or ten pages a day for an entire month, somewhere in that first month you're going to be like, whoa, my my bad drawings now look better than my best drawings were a month ago, uh, and that's the only way to get there, and that's the only advice I can give you. Um, yeah, I can look at your drawing and say, well, you know, you could uh, practice drawing hair or drawing uh, you know armor or whatever it is that you're you're working on. That's not going to do you any good because the problem is you need to learn how to draw. <laughs> you need to put in the mileage so that it's not a struggle anymore uh, before I can give you any helpful feedback. And because of that, it's you know it's not fair to me and it's not fair to you to like uh, criticize just a handful of drawings. So when you take your portfolio to a convention uh, and artists. Uh, they're either gonna they're, they some artists will give you critiques. They'll like tear apart your drawings and they'll make you feel really bad. They'll make you wish that you quit uh, or that you hadn't asked them at all. And that's why I don't encourage people to ask for that kind of feedback. And I, I've seen it a lot of times because the the, the problem is uh, just because an artist knows how to draw doesn't mean they know how to teach. And you'll run into that a lot. Uh, there's and. Some, some of those artists will come off as arrogant or jerks because they're like, well, you're not very good. <laughs> they're not trying to help you get better. They're just telling you the truth, which is, yeah, you're not going to get a job. Not, not until you put in the time to get better, to get to a certain level. But they were at that level at some point too. Like they had to really, really work at it to get better. The chances are though, they started a lot younger than you did, you know, or a lot er earlier and they had... Uh, better resources to help them get there faster and that's why they sort of have a bit of a, a judgment of your where you're at with your art um so yeah that's that's number one that's the number one reason why artists don't get good f feedback so the next phase of why artists don't get good feedback uh, is when you actually get good like you get good enough that <clears throat> your drawings aren't bad anymore uh and this is the one where I find artists get the most frustrated because uh, the first stage, you know, most artists are like, yeah, yeah, I know I'm bad. <laughs> I'm working on it, <laughs> you know, uh, but then at some point they get good at it. They put in enough time that they can draw a finished figure instead of a bunch of faces or, you know, a bunch of expressions or uh, copying a, a drawing from their favorite show, you know. They've gotten to a point where they can do something out of their imagination and make it look good enough that um, people can't look at it and say that's bad drawing, you know. Uh, and and that's usually the point where they stop getting feedback at all. Like at least when they were bad, people could say that's a bad drawing. But now they've reached this level where they're good enough that um, nobody can really pinpoint what it is that that's not right about their drawings. Uh, and I've seen a lot of portfolios like this. Um, and it's also, unfortunately, it's the phase that an artist usually goes through and becomes the most arrogant. Um, because they've they've gotten past that bad 
phase of being an artist. Uh, and they feel like they're entitled to respect because their art's good enough. Uh, and they, they feel entitled to some sort of, you know, they've leveled up. Yeah, they, they deserve something. Unfortunately, the reality is, so what? And uh, it's, it's kind of like I'm saying what most editors are thinking or even most readers are, are thinking. They'll look at a portfolio like this and they're like, okay, so what? You don't do bad drawings anymore, but they're not great. Like, and that's the phrase. It's uh, good is the enemy of great. You know, if you've got good drawings, it means they're not great drawings. So how do you get from being good to being great at what you're doing? And um, again, it takes more mileage. You've got to keep going and keep pushing with it. But there's something more to it than that. Usually what I find an artist that is stuck in this stage, um, what, it, what the problem is, is they're not doing anything. They're not speaking to, the, to an audience. Their drawings are, a lot of times, they're drawings that they're doing for themselves, hoping that other people will like them. And the difference between that and doing drawings for an audience is that you're thinking of yourself first. And um, so why do people care? Why should people care? You're not speaking to them. Why should they speak to you? That's really what it comes down to. And I, I, I have been through that phase. It's really lonely. It's a very lonely place to be. Uh, and I've talked to several artists just in the last few weeks that are going through that. Um, but I've, you know, at the last convention I was at, I, I ran through a whole line of artists that were just, they're, they're good, you know, but I wouldn't hire them. Like, there's nothing magic about their work. There's no, nothing special about their, what they're doing. Uh, they're just good enough to get by. Um, so yeah, if you're stuck in that phase, the best thing you can do is start thinking about what would make other people, what kind of drawings can I do or what kind of stories can I do that other people will value? What, what will they appreciate? Um, and start experimenting in that. And that's where you find a lot of fan art. You know, you'll find people that are doing... Uh, t-shirt designs of their favorite shows or whatever and that's a good thing you know it gives you that boost where you're you're finding out what people are responding to but you're also piggybacking off of uh something that somebody else has already established so, you, you know if you're if you're uh, borrowing from a fandom in order to get people to appreciate your work um uh, then it's not authentic it's not coming from inside of you it's you're you're borrowing somebody else's magic um and that's not that's not something you want to base your career off of. Um, I mean, you can. The, I, I know people that make a living with that, um, but I don't find it to be satisfying. And um, people aren't going to remember you in ten years or twenty years. Um, and that's not everybody's goal to be remembered, but I think it should be. You know, I th I think that you should do art that uh, speaks from you, from inside of you. It has it's something that you want to say. Another symptom of being in this second phase of being an artist um, is that your poses and characters tend to be really boring. <laughs> like, there's no nice way to put it. Uh, the poses are usually really stiff, and, um, you know, there's not a lot of personality to it. Um, and, and really, I mean, you're doing... The drawings look right. You're doing everything right. Um, it's just boring. You know, and um, <laughs> I hope it doesn't seem like I'm picking on anybody specifically because I'm I'm drawing on you know literally thousands of portfolios that I've seen over the years. Um, this middle phase is just the boring phase. You're learning how to do things right. Uh, you're learning how to not do things wrong. Um, but it's not good enough just to do it right. <laughs> Where the magic really comes in um, with being an artist is, is capturing life and capturing personalities and, and being entertaining. Um, and I don't, it, it just takes a lot of practice uh, to figure out what that actually means. You know, uh, one of my favorite cartoonists is uh, Chuck Jones, uh, you know, Bugs Bunny, Wiley e. Coyote, and all those. Uh, and he used to talk about 
the difference between opening a funny door and opening a door funny. You know, <laughs> like that's that's really the difference in this this type of drawings. Um, when you're when you're stuck in this phase, you you try and come up with clever gags to um, to pull off the drawing. You know, you'll you'll give them a funny hat. Uh, you'll give them a funny costume, or, or the you know the 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 joke will is supposed to be the funny part of it, um, and you're you're trying to compensate for something that's not quite there yet. Uh, where the master cartoonist, uh, you know, or or comic book artist or whatever, can um, put really subtle, almost genius personality into their drawings, um, where just the look on a character's face makes you laugh and then adding the gag into it makes it even better you know uh so that's that's the difference between these two that's the difference between this stage and the next level um and <laughs> so it, it's such a subtle difference though that it's hard to find people to give you f feedback on that so when you're showing your portfolio around or you're showing your sketchbook to people or uh, you're just getting kind of a, well, that's cool, you know, kind of response from people. Um, and it, that's frustrating. <laughs> I think the most frustrating part about being stuck in this second phase as an artist really is just how lonely it is. Um, I've seen more artists like breaking down into tears over not getting feedback like they'll they'll show their work to people and they're like say something you know say you hate it say it's terrible say you know a little tiny thing that's good about it. say anything but most time most of the time people look at their stuff and they don't give them any kind of feedback at all because they don't know how to tell you to improve they look at it and they don't see all the things that stand out as wrong like the anatomy is okay you know you you're doing faces you're doing expressions they're wearing clothes <laughs> they're not floating in midair you know they they're grounded by shadows or floors or whatever you're doing everything that you're supposed to do but the, you know you're not doing it exceptionally well and so when you show your portfolio to you know an editor or a director or, or you know or, uh, or a writer that you want to work for they don't know what kind of feedback to give you and there's very few artists out there or teachers out there that can um, see through that and see the roadblocks in your head that you need to work on in order to overcome that um, but yeah I've I've looked at portfolios from artists and they were just like they were crying because they were so frustrated and not being able to get feedback. Um, so yeah, if you're stuck in that place, you're not the only one. There's a lot of other artists out there like that. Uh, and it does pass eventually, but it's a, it's a very lonely period of time to go through. And, I, and that's when a lot of artists actually quit. They give up on drawing at that, that phase because um, they've put so much into it. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, they put so much into it that they're ready to start getting something back, and uh, but unfortunately they're not getting anything back at that stage. Um, so yeah, if you're stuck in that place, just keep plugging away at it. Eventually, you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, and you'll come out of it and. Um, and it won't be so hard anymore. <clears throat> I think for me, what really helped me um, overcome that was I started getting back in touch with why I became an artist to begin with. What made me love drawing? What made me inspired by other artists? You know, and getting back in touch with that twelve-year-old kid that loved drawing just because he loved drawing. Uh, and I started doing those drawings again just to make myself smile. And um, in doing that, it uh, helped me get in touch with doing art that made other people smile. 
uh, or made them get excited about drawings. And um, the people sketching that I do really was uh, the beginning of that. Like I, this is probably five or six years ago that I, uh, I got out of that long, dark tunnel and I started doing art that people responded to uh, and that I really responded to and um, sketching people in public was what did it. You know, I started having fun with it. So the last stage that, um, and this really isn't the last stage, but the third stage I want to talk about that an artist will go through uh, that they have trouble getting feedback. Um, and this is a surprising one, and it'll probably be surprising for all y'all, all y'all artists that are just starting out. Um, but artists that are really, 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 really good have trouble getting feedback. Um, and it's deceptive because they'll show their work to people and, and people are like, whoa, that's so good. Why aren't you working for Disney? You know, or <laughs> you should be working for Pixar or Marvel or, or something. Uh, and then they're like, yeah, I should. I don't know why I'm not. <laughs> um, and these artists are really good. They're like, they've reached um, a pinnacle of their talent where they can do art that is of such a high level of quality that um, people really respond to it across the board, but it's also not getting them hired at jobs. Uh, and it's very, very frustrating. And I've seen this from both sides. Like I've been that artist and I've seen uh, an artist <laughs> that was much better than me. I've seen several artists that were much better than me, uh, you know, bring up a portfolio. I remember one uh, situation um, specifically. There was a, a girl at a – this was at CT and Animation Expo about three or four years ago. And uh, she had a portfolio, and she's at the Disney booth. And I'm standing behind her and uh, watching her get feedback because I thought she was going to get hired right away. And uh, they're flipping through her portfolio and just not impressed at all. Uh, and it looked – her art was gorgeous. It looked like concept design from like Sleeping Beauty or, uh, you know, Cinderella or something like that. Just very, very good art at a high, high level of quality. And uh, they were like, "I'm sorry, we're we can't use you. This is we've seen this before." <laughs> uh, and they have seen it before. It looked like concept art from Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. It didn't look like anything new. And that's the problem. They're not doing uh, – if you're at that level of quality and you're doing something that you've seen before, then you're doing it wrong because uh, Disney doesn't want to hire those artists. They've already got a whole stable full of them. They don't – what they're looking for is something new. They're looking for your voice. Uh, and if you have something unique to say that will add to a project that they're going to be working on, not something they've already done. And I've seen that uh, – a few times there was a director at Nickelodeon. What was his name? Uh, Jorge Gutierrez or Gutierrez. He worked on El Tigre. Um, and I remember hearing him tell a story about showing his portfolio when he was at Cal Arts. Um, and they looked through the portfolio and, you know, not interested, not interested, boring, boring. I mean, they're not saying boring, but um, they're thinking it. Uh, and so he takes his portfolio and he's getting ready to leave and his sketchbook falls out of it. And, uh, they're, they're like, Whoa, what is this? And they're like looking through a sketchbook and it's got all this gorgeous, like Latin style influenced, uh, sketches in his book, completely different from what was in his portfolio, uh, and very unique. And, uh, they're like, what is this? And they're just falling in love with it and they're showing it to everybody else that's there and, Everybody's really excited. They're like, why didn't you put this in your portfolio? And he's like, because I, I don't know. It doesn't look like something that would get me hired. And they're like, well, this is what we're looking for. We're not looking for the next Mary Blair. We're not looking for the next, you know, Glenn Keane. We're looking for the next new thing, you know, not something that looks like somebody else. And I, I find that in the comic book industry, too. Like, if you draw, like, J. Scott Campbell or um, – or you draw like Michael Turner or Jim Lee or something like that. Uh, chances are, a studio or you know a, a 
comic book company would rather hire those guys than hire you. They don't want to hire somebody that copies somebody else. Uh, they'd rather get the original. And um, you you really start to like get your paint yourself into a corner when you try and draw like somebody else. I feel that way about anime also. Um, I think anime is a great source of inspiration and it's helped a lot of artists get started in drawing. But if you're trying to draw exactly like an anime artist, um, you're never going to be able to stand out. I mean, there's like a whole country of people that draw <laughs> anime better than you could ever draw it or I could ever draw it. Uh, and if you're trying to emulate that style, they're, they're just going to go hire somebody else that's already good at it. Uh, so the, the best artists are able to take what they're inspired by their favorite artist and make something new out of it. Uh, and, and, and give it a unique twist. And that's something you really have to keep in mind when you're going back to the well of your inspiration, whatever it is. And I know with like comic book conventions, I see a lot of uh, people doing pinup art, you know, and um, they're doing like posters and stuff and prints that they sell at shows. Um, but it's sort of like a, a bottomless pit, you know, like you're... You, you, you have to keep doing more and more pinup art in order to make a living with it and you're seeing more and more competition from other people that are doing the exact same thing uh, and you're going to wake up in five years and wonder like well <laughs> you know this isn't a career this is like just trying to pay the bills uh, and I learned that the hard way with doing caricatures like at, at uh, fairs and stuff like I can make really good money with it but um, I'm not building a brand I'm not building a name for myself. Uh, you need to do something unique and have your own voice, and, and that's what people are after. So, yeah, that's the three types of artists that have trouble getting feedback. And then, you know, once you actually start getting hired, uh, you know, and I, I see artists that are, like, at, at the top. Like, it doesn't get much better than them. Uh, those guys have trouble getting feedback, too, uh, and that they have to really work hard to surround themselves with other people that are at that high level. They can call them on their BS. <laughs> but that's, you know, most of us don't have to worry about getting there for a long, long time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, in the meantime, um, I, this, I wanted to do this video and kind of give everybody some perspective because we're all at different levels. You know, some of us are just getting into drawing. Uh, some of us have been doing it our whole lives and, uh, you know, like retired school teachers just, you know, trying to finally do the thing that they're passionate about and, um, you know, and, so we're all struggling to find out how do you make this work, you know, and, and what are people going to respond to? And what it really comes down to is having something unique to say. Uh, and I've said this in a previous video is, you know, you, you can do stick figures and get people to buy your artwork if you've got something to say, if you've got a, a story that people respond to. Um, so, yeah, wherever you're at, I recommend focusing on having something to say, you know, telling a story with your drawings. Uh, I hope you found this helpful and more than you found it intimidating. <laughs> uh, I'm always trying to find the right balance between um, giving people hope uh, for what it is that they're working towards, but also realistic expectations. Like, learning to draw well is not easy. It takes time. It takes practice. It takes a lot of bad drawings. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, humility. <laughs> but it's, it's totally worth it. Like it, When you get to a point where you do a drawing that makes you laugh and makes other people laugh, or you do a drawing that makes other people just sit back and admire beauty, and appreciate their life a little bit more just because of something that you created it is totally worth all the struggles that you went through um, but I also want you to know that you're not alone like every artist has to go through this um, so when you run into artists that give terrible feedback <laughs> that make you feel bad about being bad um, forget those people. You don't need that. 
they I don't know where they're coming from because they had to start from somewhere too. Um, and my opinion is that we should encourage each other instead of making each other feel bad. But at the same time, um, there's not much you can say to help somebody. You've got to do it for yourself. You've got to do the work yourself. But it's totally worth the effort. Uh, <laughs> I love watching artists click. Like they they put in the time and they're filling up sketchbooks, and then there's that one day where they do that drawing, and it's like, oh, I did it. Like you can see that they got it. They taught themselves how to do that thing that they've been wanting to do for so long. Um, man, those are the the golden moments. That's why I teach. That's you know what I love about doing this. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing already you guys out there watching these YouTube videos, you know, you're filling up sketchbooks and I'm seeing month after month you're getting better and uh, things are clicking into place that, um, you know, you're finding those answers you didn't even know you were looking for um, and it's just getting better and better. Like, it's exciting to see and I love seeing artists encourage each other like it's just it's good stuff so i hope you liked this video i hope you found it really helpful um and encouraging if you liked it go ahead and share it um give it a like and uh, maybe leave a comment and tell me what you thought um and again i appreciate you guys thanks for watching and uh keep smiling <laughs>